daughter. Oh, I don't know if he's got a shotgun, hopefully not. <laughs> not on the season yet. <laughs> he's the director of, uh, the Faribault Director of Community Marketing Director. There you go. Yeah. That encompasses a few different duties. I like that. Stuff. I like that title. In charge of the Main Street thing. Program. Yep. Work in the Main Street Program, work in tourism, and then as a, um, both of those house with the Chamber of Commerce, I also help with the marketing efforts there and whatever else may come up. Help the community be a little stronger, right? Fantastic. Well, I don't recall if we talked since the Total World dedication. I'm not sure, but you know, we but sure had a... Was that fantastic. Uh, what, what, a, what a cool thing. We had a pile of people show up. Um, the celebrities were just really gracious. Um, Rick and Kelly Dale were, were here from Las Vegas and um, visited with everybody doing the autographs and I, I don't know how many pictures they must have taken with people inside I the know, I couldn't world. believe it. They had a permanent <laughs> smile when we, they left. Absolutely. And they, uh, you know, they, they really enjoyed uh, what uh, those hardworking folks that put the uh, Tilt World project together here did. It was, that was fun. It was a lot of fun. And they seemed very genuine. I mean, they genuinely enjoyed Faribault, reminded them of their hometown. I, I, I agree. It, it really appeared to be that way, and I do believe it was genuine. You know, it, you think about those folks who would put their life into fix and stuff up pretty down to earth. So I think uh, a community like Faribault getting behind a project like that would really mean a lot to them. I had somebody comment, there were scores of people down there, I don't know if you ever got an accurate count of people, I'm horrible at guessing. The accurate numbers. count is lots. <laughs> okay. But there were scores and scores, I can safely say scores and scores of people down there. Agreed. And. I had a comment from somebody that said, that doesn't look like any tilt -a world car that I remember. I said, well, I think it's a combination of the it's a tribute. tilt -a world cars. It, yeah. it, it's a tribute. There's been some discussion around that. and I mean, understanding that um, that, that it's a tribute, you, you get your arms run a little better. There's the different years of cars kind of combined into exactly. one. Exactly. Uh, in fact, my understanding is um, that car was a prototype. They were actually working on a few different things. Uh, with that car and the next car um, as, as testers in the factory. And uh, then they ended up out at, out at Harley's after a time, and that's, you know the story about how they came in the hands of uh, the group that fixed it up. Oh, sure. Well, Gary, I know, loved it and I saw it. First thing he says to me is, Harley loves this. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Wasn't that awesome? That's awesome. I think, you know, I think that one time, one, one season, baseball season when I was a kid, I was on Harley's auto salvage team. They uh, used to, Hunts Webb was a, was a team that businesses used to sponsor the ball teams down at the uh, Tipe Tonka Park. So I, I believe I was Harley's auto salvage once. Well, I see they dedicated the new scoreboards down at Tipe Tonka. They did. I, I wasn't aware. Down at Tipe Tonka, new scoreboards, because, you know, it floods out every other year pretty yeah. much. <laughs> it does. And the FEMA would not allow the city to move the fields after the last flood. Really? That's interesting. They wouldn't pay for that. They'll pay for, and this is the, the, the most, I mean, it's lame brain, really, when you think about it. Okay. Sorry, FEMA. But <laughs> think about that. They won't pay for moving the fields. They'd rather pay for it when it floods every other year. Fix, fix it back up after it floods. That seems counterproductive to me. It certainly does. They also made them take down, you know, the, um, the temporary levy up by the... Um, Wastewater treatment. Oh, plant. I'd heard that. Yeah, I know that. Um, and FEMA's got a big job as, as floodplains seem to be changing, as water uh, tables seem to be changing around the world. But um, common sense should come into play. Right? Well, you would think so, but government <laughs> common sense. Sorry, that was my editorial for the day. Although I, I, you're, you're talking government. I do have to. I do have to throw a plug in. City wise, in Fairbolt right now, you know. I, it, we talked a little bit last time I was here about this vision um, 2040 that they put together and I visited with uh, some councilors and the mayor and city administrators since then and our city government right now, they've got it going on. They're paying attention to what the citizens want, the vision that came out and uh, they're putting plans in place to address those. So I, I just got to tip the hat to that whole crew right now. Okay, I won't run all <laughs> government in the You same. can stay on FEMA, I guess, for now, but yeah. I think say thumbs up for the Faribault government. We're going to jump up uh, the Twin Cities and get your opening marker. I noticed that. You the the one is the thumb. The oh, okay. two is the, one th the, the, the number one finger, and the three there is the, the number two finger. Sure. 
That's how they count in Italy. Interesting. I count different ways now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For those that can't see, yeah. <laughs> a little injury on one hand. Yeah. Well, we got a so big event coming up here this weekend. I know the Faribault Chambers hosting some sort of a tailgate event. You, you know, it's game. it's uh, it's just just going to be fun. Before the game, Saturday, it's a two o'clock game <coughs> against uh, the Lonsdale Aces down at Bell Field. Um, we're going to have a tailgate party. Uh, we're going to sell tickets, ten bucks a ticket. Get you a hamburger, or a chicken sandwich, a beverage of your choice. Tickets into the game. And um, we'll have some fun. We'll have games and prizes at the tailgate party and throughout the game. A lot of it's coming together right now. We're just, um, we know some of the things we're going to do. We've got some t-shirt giveaways, for example. We're going to give away some tickets to the Taste of Faribault, which is taking place on September 17th, American Legion from 5 to 8. So it'll be a good time down at Bellfield, cheering on our Faribault Lakers. And the tailgating begins at what time? 12.30. But you know, it's an open park. If you uh, anybody wants to get down there earlier, then certainly certainly cruise down. There won't be anything organized going on until 12.30. Now remember, this is amateur baseball, so they do sell beer. There's there beer available. Though. In fact, that's one of your choices with your ticket, with your burger or your chicken sandwich would be a beer. So, yeah, it's a good time. Nice cold beer at the ballpark with a burger. Or and it's it's going to be going to be weather to be outside enjoying that Saturday, I understand. So, yeah, grab a friend, come on out. The Lonsdale Ace, it should be a good crowd there. I think so. I think so. Did, so. did the Lonsdale Bombers at one time exist? Because that's what I recall the team Oh, I don't remember that. That's before, before my time. time. I'm going to have to look that up. They've been the Aces since I've been here. Okay. Okay. Very good. As far as I know. Very good. They may have had two teams at one time. Who knows? Cannon Falls did, you know. It was... The did the Cannon Falls Bombers, Falls that might have been it. But Cannon Falls had the Bears, we're talking amateur baseball. That's right. They had the Bears and they had, the, I think it was the Black Sox or something like that. Could be, I know we played over there a little bit. I played for a few years, I played in the DNR League. Oh, sure. Uh, when, up in Elko with a couple of friends from college, when I first got out of college. And then oh, ended of course, it's the DRS League. DRS, that's what it is, the DRS. And then um, the Faribault was in the Tri-County I believe it was called, and uh, came back here and played out for a few years with the Lakers back well, in the day. Well, they were the so. Southern Mini many years ago. Southern Mini. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of fun. Lots of history out of that Bellfield ballpark. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. I remember, do you ever heard of Eddie Fainer? Sure. Eddie yeah. Fainer, oh, the floor bet. man. Of yeah. course I did. I, I got a hit off of him. No way. He drilled me on the next pitch. Man. The next saw, time I came oh, to that, he drilled me. Uh, uh, I got the first base. His son was the first base, you know. Yeah, I that's right, first, Eddie Jr. I got the first base after he drilled me. <laughs> the, the king in his court. I was lucky. It was just a lucky, you know, it was lucky. Uh, yeah, uh, the guy could strike everybody out pretty much. Pretty much. And that's the that's the fast pitch softball. And it was boom. That was humming in there. Uh, uh, just of got very Gosh. lucky. Down the right field line, you know, light swing kind of thing. There you just go. Hugged the line, dropped in. Nice. But the next time up, right in the back. Ooh. Kind of teach into teach you. <laughs> teach you. So. But yeah, uh, lots of fun down at Belfield this weekend, I think. And um, looking forward to that. So grab your neighbor, grab a family member, grab a friend, come on down. I remember his son telling me at first base, shouldn't have got a hit off of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he drilled That's it. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> fun, fun. The Indianapolis Clowns. Now that I recall, there's the sort of the baseball version of the Harlem Globetrotters. Right. Back in the 70s, came and played a game at uh, at Belfield as well. Huh. Okay. And yeah. uh, what a, what a scream that was! They had all the golfers played some exhibition games out there before. Oh, nice. The golfer baseball team. You know, we're I'm I'm hoping we can do something fun like that for exhibition games maybe in the next year or two. Um, the Saints played down in Otana this year. Mm -hmm. uh, for an exhibition game, yeah. and uh, it's just good wholesome stuff, you know. Um, get away from the cable TV and the and the Nintendo. Oh, it's not Nintendo, no, it's Xbox. It's right, all those things. Get out and enjoy some real life action. Well, these people aren't getting paid millions of dollars to play the game either. That's true. That's true. It uh, makes it a little bit genuine, I think. Playing for the love of the game. <laughs> you got it. Well, what else is going on in Fairbanks? I thought that's what you were going to tell yeah, me. Well, you know, we've got uh, 
We've got a car cruise night coming up again. That'll be on the uh, 17th, Friday night, downtown Faribault. Um, their businesses are giving away awards for that now. Um, every block has a business favorite. And uh, last, uh, last month was our first uh, our kickoff, kickoff of those prizes, and it went over really well. That's a lot of fun for the business owners and for the car owners. So that was, that was a pretty good time. So if you got a vehicle, bring it down. And what are the stipulations on that? How old does it have to be? Or I, I don't believe there are. I think you show up and park. If that's if that's different, I guess they'll ask you to move. But I don't think that's the case. Okay, you come on down and join if you got something you're proud of. Um, crazy days, and we've added a crazy night event this year. <laughs> and have you heard about that at all? I think I heard a little bit about it, but yeah, it'd lighten us some more. Friday the 31st during crazy days, which uh, there'll be a light opening. Some businesses will be busy on Thursday night the 30th. Um, with their doors open, but Friday the 31st, Saturday the 1st be crazy days. Blast from the past will be the theme. We're inviting um, some vendors to make sure we got a nice full downtown, so there'll be our businesses plus some vendor tents. Um, but Friday night we're having a, uh, it's, it's a basically a bar Olympics. So we'll huddle up um, between 6 and 7 p.m. at Boxers, those that want to participate. Um, sign up, there will be a small entry fee, and then you go to four to five, we have four participating bars now, we're maybe adding a fifth, but you'll go there and partake in some sort of fun event. Um, well, it, now this was, I was told this was going to be a pub crawl, but it's actually it's, a, it's a pub crawl version with yeah. a contest, yeah. Um, now for example, I know that they're intending to put together the American Legion, one of the stops ready for this? Frozen turkey bowling. And the silence. <laughs> but that's what, that's, so that'll be an event there. You'll get a score. There'll be a different type of game like that at each of the establishments. Um, wander around. Um, I'm going to say roller skating around an obstacle course because that used to be the roller rink. You know? Oh, that would be fun. That'd be fun. I'm not sure what the liabilities from yeah. putting roller skates on people would be, but um, <laughs> but that's a, that's an example of an event. I know that they were considering that one. Um, what are some of the other events? It sounds very interesting. Well, I believe we're going to have name that tune, which would be with the blast from the past theme. It'll be especially fun. So when it's your turn up, you'll grab the microphone, the DJ will play a tune. Depending how long it takes you to name the tune, that's what your score would be from that particular uh -huh. establishment. There'll be a uh, a version of beer pong. Um, at one of, the, one of the establishments. But the idea is get around and see what we have to offer for nightlife in Faribault. And there's, it's a pretty good product offering, um, not just among those participating um, establishments. Right now, by the way, Signatures, Grandpa Al's, Boxers, and the Legion are all participating. Uh, we may be adding one so um, in other establishments as well. But uh, I have to have a, a, a quick uh, tip of the hat to Tony Langerud's insurance uh, company. They're sponsoring from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock in the morning, Safe Cab's Home. I was going to say, that's got to be in there somewhere. We, we just thought that was so important. We, we want to encourage uh, enjoying responsibly uh, the fun nightlife that we have to offer in Faribault. And because this, uh, this event is, it was, you know, we're, we're inviting people down specifically to hang out and have that type of fun. We're offer, uh, offering also a safe passage home for those who may not have had a designated driver or another uh, safe conveyance home. So it'll be free cab rides. And thanks, Tony Langrude, for sponsoring. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, agreed, agreed. So that'll be that'll be a fun evening. Um, again, that's uh, Friday the 31st. We have a chamber golf tournament, by the way. I wanted to slip that in. We still have some openings. That's on August 13th at the golf club. So if there's a team that you'd like to get together or would like to be placed on a team, um, give us a call at the Chamber of Commerce and, and we'll get you set up. That's 334-4381. Uh, um, or lab us an email. So there's some of, the, some of the things coming up fairly soon here in town. I don't know if you do a monthly tab on how sales tax, lodging tax is doing in the community. I'm just curious we, as to how our season is going. Okay, you know, I, 
Thank, thanks for that question. I can share that um, we're pretty much on par through last year through April. Unfortunately, the lag time between collection, turning it in, and when we can actually measure it. Okay. Um, but through April, we were dead on. I was talking with a lodging uh, property owner last night at the F Town Brewery. They've got a, they, they, they've got their operation up and going now. They're they're, they're making some items, tasty items. Um, anyway, they shared that they were fairly close to on par, within five percent of last year's numbers. You know what would be cool is if they had some stuff out at the tailgate event. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not sure I can pull that together. Thanks for uh, thanks for putting that out there. I do know that they are going to have a tent at the Fairville Woolen Mills 150th event coming up. When's that? I'm going to look it up for sure. Uh, I believe probably it's, in the fall. It, no, it's it's in August. Oh, it is. I'll look that up and, and, and get that back. That's it's, okay. It's it's in August, 8th through 15th. But I'll that's when the river fest sure. is too. August. Yes, that's that's on the 8th. So I'll think you say we'll we'll grab that. Um, we have 150th, not just for the woolen mills, but BA. we have it for BA. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, wow. That's uh, quite a thing to be able to share together, right? And in mid-August, you know, Fort Snelling is doing a big to-do about the 150th anniversary of the end of the Civil War. Oh, wow. In the mid-August. Fun. So think about that. I was just The only reason I brought that up was to put it in perspective. It was BA's, how long? BA school started... At the end of the Civil War, yeah. Same with woolen mills. Same with woolen mills. That's something. That's uh, that's we've been around for a little while here in town, haven't we? We've got and a lot of history here. You know that, Mark. Oh, we absolutely do. And just you know, you, you talked about the Civil War and, and bringing military um, note into the woolen mills. You know, they've supplied nearly a million blankets to the U.S. military. Wow made right here in Fairville. That's a pretty good sport. Yeah. I remember my dad had a old chest from the Army that was sat in a shed on our property, and my brother and I used to sneak in there and look through some of the stuff. You probably knew about this anyway, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Big old green Army blanket in there was probably made right here in Fairville. More than likely. More than likely. Wow. Wow, wow. So what... What else is happening from your end in Fairville? What have you covered lately? As I mentioned before, on the news earlier today. Okay. <laughs> Rice, Rice County, maybe, maybe it wasn't on the news. Maybe I shared this on our website. Anyway, Nort Johnson is with me, by the way, here on AM Minnesota. He is the Community Marketing Director of the City of Fairville. Some people call it a Tourism Director. He's the Community Marketing Director because it's about more than just tourism, right? Correct. We're, I mean, we're marketing um, uh, locally as well as outside the area for what's going on. So from an event and, and uh, retail perspective, we're, we're, we're on top of those things as well. Sheriff Troy Dunn was sharing with me this past weekend. We are at the Laker game on Sunday. And he said, the lakes were crazy this past weekend in the Fairmore area. Oh, I'm sure. We've got, we've got such a beautiful offering of lakes. I mean, within just a short drive of town, um, we've got quite a few places to be. So, um, speaking of lakes and lake safety, important item. The water patrol is going to be down at Crazy Days as well. So, if you want to learn more about that, um, the lakes. I have not uh, yet this year been able to dip my feet in any lakes around here. I want you. You know, I don't get to go there much at all, and here it is, right next to us. Well, I think, I'm with you on that. I think we're going to snare a pontoon uh, in the next few weeks and uh, go enjoy it a bit. Our it Italy, my fellow travelers from Italy are going to go out on a pontoon and have a reunion some Sunday coming up. So nice. We'll get to get good, on good. one of the area lakes with that. A few options for that. Good, good. By the way, I just on my handy Visit Fairwell uh, app. As the website converts over to very usable handheld uh, on the phone right yeah. now. I just whipped that up. <clears throat> so I've got all these events up, and I was curious to make sure I got the Woolen Mills date oh, sure. right. That is August 15th, this uh, um, Fairville Woolen Mills anniversary party. So that'll be... Uh, so that's the same weekend that they're celebrating, the 150th 
anniversary of the end of the Civil War. Awesome. That's that's. I wonder just if they awesome. knew that when they planned that. They I'm must gonna, have. I'm going to share that up to make sure they're aware. There may be some tie in there. International Fairville Festival. International Fair Festival. Fairville's August 22nd. You can just scroll right through these. Click through for more information if you need to. You know that same uh, Saturday as the Blue Collar Barbecue Festival, there's the uh, the ride for hospice takes place, the motorcycle ride. Yep. I know that, uh, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. It's also the Straight River Relay for Life Stroll. Correct. I mean, everything's happening. Run, baby, know. run. That's what we've got on here. It's going to be very interesting. We a, you know, we've got a lot going on in this awesome little town. We've got the Pet Parade August 6th. The problem is it's all in that one weekend. Yeah, Carb Fest, August 6th, 7th, and 8th. <laughs> I didn't realize that was a weekend. <laughs> uh, I don't know anybody Merlin players are playing down at, uh, um, they actually open July 24th. Correct. With, uh, with the musical, yeah. 9. Fair is the 21st through the 26th. Rice County Rice Fair. Rice County Fair. Boy, not everything's on that weekend, to be sure. There's a crazy days at Fairville West Mall, 17th through the 19th of July. So... And then the you know, that's interesting. About that. Nort, uh, and it brings up an interesting point because there are so many things on that one weekend. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how you would do this, but is there a way to coordinate that better so that everything doesn't fall on the same weekend? You, you know, know there's, there's, um, there's advantages to trying to spread things out, but there's also advantages to filling the weekend up. It's uh, a good friend of mine, a brilliant marketer, um, used to talk about the idea of making sure that you've got a really full glass. Okay, when you're making an offering to somebody, make sure you've got something for everybody. A glass of water full looks much more inviting than you try to spread it out and it gets a little bit shallow. Shallow, you pour it on the table and you know it just sort of doesn't mean as much. So um, there's advantages both ways. Both ways. I think capitalizing on traffic that's here for one event to help build another, help cause attendance for another, is important. So I, I, I will share, I'm on the Blue Collar Barbecue uh, Committee now, those guys worked hard. They, I haven't had much to offer being first year in, but I'm sure learning some things from that crew. Um, but we'll, going forward, um, my role uh, with tourism and with the Chamber of Commerce uh, will include helping assess those things. We certainly don't direct those activities by any means, but we want to make sure that we're able to help organize thoughts and ideas about how to make any event better um, for both our both our citizens and for those visitors coming to town. And it takes volunteers to run all these things, so. Wow, volunteerism in Fairville is rampant. I mean, if, if people like to spend a little time talking about bad things, it seems to be a little bit more palatable for some reason. People like to perpetuate that message, but I'm telling you right now, volunteerism in Fairville is rampant. I think it's I think it's a I think it's a big issue. We've got so many volunteers working hard, doing the good things for the community. That's what it takes. But Heritage Days went beautifully. It was the weather was perfect. Of course, you know, all these events we're talking about are pretty much dependent on having good weather. Right. Right. We don't have a lot of those types of festivals in the winter. Although we have two fat tire events, we'll talk about those going uh, going forward. But there are those hardcore people who they don't mind the weather and they'll get out and enjoy the bike trails on those new fancy fat tire bicycles that seem to uh, uh, seem to be becoming more and more popular. And they're grooming the trails up uh, in the nature center. They've got miles of trails down there, so popular. Uh, and we've actually in the last uh, several weeks made arrangements to have, by we, I'm talking about a, a concert of people with uh, the bike clubs, the nature center, and actually our uh, design committee downtown to have the trail groomed from downtown to the nature center so that there's easy conveyance from downtown Fairwell um, to the nature center all winter on those fat tire bicycles. So look for more information on those two festivals coming up. And we'll look to make those, because they're fairly new, we'll look to make those as um, friendly of events as possible, include things that would uh, not necessarily be just for the fat tire bikers, but something that those who just want to come down and enjoy a festival event could, could do as well.
Yeah. Well, maybe we need to have some sort of a bike festival. I think that'd be the way to go. our bike trails yeah. here in Fairwell. Maybe, uh, maybe fat tire bikes and F-Town beer might be the way to go. Might be the way to go. So, um, yeah, we'll have we'll have a little bit of uh, action this winter on the on the activity side. Again, this Saturday, Lonsdale Aces are in town, taking on the Fairbowl Lakers. Fairbowl Area Chamber is doing a tailgating event. Yes, sir. 12:30 until 12:30 till game time, but we'll continue some of the fun during the game. Anybody who'd like to have a crack at being the PA announcer <laughs> in the sixth inning is going to have an op opportunity to uh, bid on that uh, that chance. So your dreams to be a Gordy could come true this well, Saturday. I, I have a microphone in front of you. Tony Langley does a PA announcer. Like he's going he's gonna to step down. He's going to step down for one inning and allow uh, allow an up-and-comer to give it a try. So You know the Fairable Flames are again having a state tournament here. We I did the PA before. announcing for that last year. That was, was fun. That was, that was a blast. Uh, Unfortunately, there weren't tons of people there. we got to get more people there huh. to watch our Fairable Flames. I think talking about it, making sure that um, making sure that those events are uh, engaging um, is important. So it was fun. It was a good time. There was good food out there. Jerry Cast does a great job on his grill. Yes. Yeah. Chicken breasts yeah. and burgers and hot dogs I'd, and everything else. Bashers is actually, uh, they're going to come for, our, they're the ones providing for our tailgate party. True. Um, but they're, the proceeds are going to go for the Laker Club. They're, they're right. going to come out and just do it at class, so that's awesome. Tomorrow, Superintendent of the Purple Public Schools, Todd Susker, joins me. Friday, i got a great show. We're going to be in Pine Island visiting with a young lady who just returned from Italy. She was over there for five months. She's going to be a junior in high school. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it on Fridays and Minnesota show.